Hey everybody, welcome back to Cheap Comic Collector. This is episode number 402, and it looks like it will be airing July 21st. So, uh, happy middle of July. Hope everybody's having a good Sunday, and uh, everything is going well with you and your family. And uh, everything is cool. So, today uh, we're going to be going through uh, a series I just read, which you... Probably, if you've been watching for the channel for a while, you'll know that I uh, have been looking for this series. I had the whole series called Rassel, and it's upside down right now because the camera's backwards. But uh, um, Dr. Silver Age Rod from Comic Book Memories uh, was kind enough to gift me the last ep issue that I needed. Um, so as soon as I got done reading what I was reading, I started in on this. Um, I enjoyed it. A lot so we're gonna do a review of that and uh, then when we get through with that we will phone drop epic phone drop uh, we will be going into this box here the Yoda's guarding um, these books here right here uh, I've been uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to um, Get rid of the piles that don't stack well. <laughs> um, uh, because they're just kind of getting in the way of things. And, and uh, so we're going to go through these books as well. I paid... These were these were bundles. I got these from Whatnot. They're... Uh, I don't know how to say that. Apps Boys Comics. A-B-T-S-B-O-Y-S. Undercase Comics is who they're from. Um, I think they normally do like two dollar claim sales, uh, but this day they were doing a live stream with uh, five for five dollar bundles. So dollar comics <clears throat> with shipping, they came out to about dollar seventeen a piece, is what I have written down. So uh, we'll get into those and see what I got. And uh, but first we're gonna we're gonna go through Razzle. So let me bring take you up top and we'll get started. And if you have a moment, please like the video. I know uh, recently YouTube has made some changes, so it's not quite as uh, easy to like anymore. <laughs> and uh, um, there's also a subscription button down in the corner of my videos now, because I figured out how to do that, because I saw some other people messing with it. And uh, so if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and get started. Let me turn the light on so you can see things a little bit better. Yeah, it makes it pop. All right, so Rassel. So I, I'm a big fan of Bone. I really enjoyed uh, Jeff Smith's earlier series, Bone, very much. And so when I found out about this series... I really, really wanted to read it, um, but number the last issue just wasn't coming across the uh, and it cut showing up in anything, you know, any place where I was getting comics. So, Doctor Silver Age sent it to me. Thank you once again, Rod. Um, and uh, I was so I was able because I didn't want to read it without knowing without having an ending. Um, and and everything gets wrapped up in that last issue. It's it's a uh, thicker than the rest of the issues and there's a um so i'm really glad that i waited to have the whole series because um the in a it, it's very different from bone as it's a very different type story um instead of having you know basically cartoon characters go on in an epic adventure in the style of like say carl barks or or whatever uh uncle scrooge you know, um, this is about human characters. It's a detective noir uh, that is also science fiction. Um, and it's interesting. It's very, it's a very interesting story. It does have adult moments in it. There's a lot of, uh, he, he, the main character is like most uh, detective fiction has flaws. Uh, he's a womanizer He's a drinker. Uh, 
and he, he he sleeps with almost every female character in this story actually um there's a couple that he doesn't <laughs> but for the most part uh yes yes he does and uh um but it's an interesting story the pacing is very similar to bone the art style is very similar to bone so as you'll see uh, as we open it up here and you can see uh the art style is very similar the pacing got us started off at a slow pace there's no dialogue it's just setting the scene with the uh american southwest desert scenery and uh and I, I've never, honestly, I've never quite, he shows this a lot, and I've never quite figured out what it's supposed to be. <laughs> um, but it's it's basically, like, like here, this is, I, I know now, that after I've read the entire thing, that this is basically a pebble in water. Um, so that may be what that is since it starts here and then it's slowly falling and then it, it goes into water and it's just, I didn't realize at first that that's what I was looking at. Um, but it does, it makes sense. I, I, um, now that I've read the whole thing and I'm looking at this like, first issue once again, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so Russell, uh, has the ability from an invention uh, to uh, visit parallel worlds. And so he uh, he uses that ability to go into other universes and steal works of art, which he then sells. So like in this, this opening sequence here, he's stealing a Picasso um, from another world. And uh, um, things happen. And, and uh, you know, it kind of starts off with a bang here uh, once it gets through that opening scene and uh you don't quite know what's going on you know it all gets revealed as the story progresses and that's why i'm glad i waited um because of the pacing is very similar to bone where it's like man that was you know you read it fast and then you're like but you want more it's well done um and the story um very much like bone the story as it unfolds, um, the payoff is in the journey to the end of the story. It's not so much, there's not so much that great of a payoff at the end, just, just the same as there wasn't with Bone. Um, the payoff is in the journey getting there. You have a great time reading it. And you want to see what happens next. You want more to be revealed, so you keep reading it. Uh, to get there, and uh, and and I don't want to give too much of it away because I don't know how many people have actually read this. I know it's been around for a few years, but uh, uh, it, it's because it, it does get complicated. I don't know if it's something I want to you know get into that much as as much of the storyline. I'll uh, I'll show you some things as we go along here. But one thing I didn't notice until about about uh, probably issue seven or so is that the back covers, uh, the first nine back covers all connect. And I wasn't aware of that until I, I got, you know, like around issue six or seven, I think, is when I first realized um, that they connected. Because to me, it was like, I look at this and I'm like, I don't even know what that's supposed to be. You know, it's, it's like the same thing on the first cover is like, what is that? I don't know what that is. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. <laughs> um, and this is one of the bad guys on this cover. And then uh, this is one of the girls. And, uh, and of course, this is Russell. And these are the, this is the invention that he uses to travel between, between worlds. Um, and one of the things about this, this story is that the only part of it that really shows flashbacks or whatever is there's there's history uh, uh, with uh, Nikolai Tesla. Um, there's a, the, he's basically the invention is based on his theories and and so forth. 
um, and it, be, it it eventually is revealed that that Russell has the missing journals of Tesla, and that's what everybody's after because they think they can use them to to uh, control energy, create weapons, and so forth. And and Russell doesn't want to see any of that done, so so he's not willing to give them up basically because bad things are going to happen and he knows it and so a lot of this goes back into the history a little bit of of Nikolai Tesla and and my understanding is that's all based on actual facts and truth um I, I'm, I'm not a by no means I, I don't know very much about Tesla well, I mean what most of what I know I actually read in this so um but he does say in the letters columns, um, you know, he mentions that that this is is all based on fact, basically, um, and in theory, um, scientific theory that that this, you know, string theory and all that, where where all of that actually could work. So, um, and then and then this is. You can you can see here how these I'm not going to connect them all up, but you can see how this connects to the other the other way it connects to the next uh, next set of three, and it just keeps keeps going that way. Um, I'm not sure what order I have them in now, but I'll figure it out. And uh, um, it's just a, a good story. It unfolds at a pace where you can understand what's going on and, you know, as much as you're supposed to understand what's going on. And, uh, I just, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I'm not going to show you every single page here. Um, but, uh, it was a good story. I haven't, it's been a, it's been quite a while since I've read something I enjoyed this much, honestly. And, and like I said, there was no big payoff in that last issue. They do explain what they explain. But then there's some other things that they leave kind of unexplained. If you start thinking about it, it's like... And they just kind of leave you to draw your own conclusions on some things. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, which is kind of appropriate for for the story that's being told um because there is a a huge moral dilemma here for the characters that you know some are leaning this way some are leaning that way and uh it's 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 a good story i enjoyed it tremendously i was not disappointed I, and i thought i would be i honestly because i enjoyed bone so much that i started off with uh i i i wasn't sure i was gonna like this because i knew it was a more adult story i knew it wasn't fenny animals you know like i like and uh um but he he uh just smith delivered this is a wonderful story i really enjoyed it um and yeah there's really no splashy artwork to show you here it's pretty much all just black and white telling the story and this is my favorite cover of the bunch because it's it's more of a you know it's it's more of a actual cover than just a design type thing you know where okay there's a cover there because I needed a cover <laughs> um but uh but yeah I I I enjoyed this tremendously um like I said the last the last issue, I'm so glad I waited until I had the whole thing to read it. Um, and uh, so I recommend reading it that way. If you, if you want to get it, I recommend you you, you kind of wait until you find all of it to read it. Um, uh, it kind of winds up in the last issue. Um, but like I said, there's some unresolved things. Uh, they don't quite get explained. Uh, but it was a lot of fun to read. Um, I really did enjoy this very, very much. So, 
my pretty much my highest recommendation for this. I, I, I really enjoyed Bone. I really enjoyed this. I would love... Uh, I hope he's working on something else because I, I'd love to continue reading uh, his stuff. So I'm not aware of anything else he's done. I, th I think he wrote, I think he wrote a Shazam series for DC at one point, and that's all I'm aware of. And uh, yeah, so but I, I really enjoyed Bone. I really enjoyed that. Just amazing stuff. And uh, inspiring, really, because yeah, that a a a a creator can still do something like that, self publish it, and and be successful with it. You know, um, it's just it's just incredible. So uh, anyway, we'll get into some more books here. And like I said, these I got for about a dollar seventeen. So. Um, but I'll probably go ahead and put all these in the sale. I don't think there's anything in here that I, 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 I mean, all of these are, look like something I would like, but <laughs> I can't keep everything. So, uh, from Dark Horse, we have Conan 21. Looks like he's got company for dinner. Or the spider has company, or he is the dinner, something. Um, Conan 22 from Dark Horse. The Heart of Yeg Kosha. Conan 23, The War of the Dead. Conan 24, The Magistrate's Wife. <laughs> Conan 25, The Hand of the Mighty. So, got some Cody in there. Like I said, these were in five issue lots. So, um, you'll be able to tell that by these little post it notes, I guess. Um, here we have Conan from Marvel. This was number eight God Killer. Uh, number seven Conan versus Man of Iron. And, of course, they used, like, the Iron Man logo and just reversed it. Um, not sure if I like that or not. <laughs> uh, Conan number five from Marvel. Number Conan the Adventurer number two from Marvel. White Death. And this is number one. Um does have some shiny foily goodness the red part is is shiny and the uh his hair and uh his loincloth are <laughs> embossed i guess that's pretty much it <laughs> i guess there's a little bit others i guess i guess his whole figure is embossed somewhat but most of it is is in the hair and the the loincloth so that's kind of weird. Um, Eagle Comics presents Robo Hunter number five, number four. So I'm guessing that means we have five issues. Number three and number two, and there's number one. So those look like they're pretty cool. Let's see what else we got yeah, for the next lot. Uh, 2080 Monthly featuring Judge Dredd from Ego Comics. A six issue mega series. So there's number six, five, four. Three and number two. Oh, and number one. It must have uh, 
They must have put six issues in that one just because it was a six issue series. So that was cool. It's totally awesome then. Uh, let's see, then we have First Adventures. I hadn't heard of this series before. Oh, no. This is number five. It's got Dynamo Joe and Whisper in it. That's uh Let's I kind of know what Dynamo Joe looks like, but I'm not as familiar with Whisper, so let's take a look. There's Dynamo Joe. And here's Whisper. And there's number four, number three, two, and one. And well, they end up the okay. So number four has Dynamo Joe Whisper and Blaze Barlow. Number three has the same. Uh, and two and one. So Blaze Barlow was also in here originally, but dropped out at some point. Let's see what that looks like. This must be Blaze Barlow here on the cover. And, and there it is. So, I don't know what's going on. Kid Detective, basically, with, with uh, some cohorts. <laughs> All right. And they bagged and boarded everything really nicely, too. These are nice bags. Uh, Spectra, number 45. This is from the 1996 run. That's an awesome cover. <laughs> 56. 51. Spectra as the Joker. And number seven, with a few uh, guest stars, it looks like. And then there's some more. There's number 18. I think this was from the earlier series. This is, yeah, this is from 1988. Uh, but here is number 20 from 1994. And then, uh, looks like things got a little messed up here. So I'm not sure what I'm looking at, I guess. Oh, uh, we got a Dick Tracy set. So we got the original Dick Tracy number four from Gladstone. Number two. number three and number one and then dick tracy versus the underworld which is number two of three 
and I believe these were print these were Disney publications so these were uh, Gladstone but when Disney did the Dick Tracy movie they they were doing the com comic books at the same time um, so they did publish like a small series of Dick Tracy and that's what that is Uh, I'm trying to uh, make sure I get the bundles here. <laughs> All-Star Squadron, one of my favorite series. We have number 28, number 27, 26, and I think there's some more. Like I said, I think he's got, he's got messed up a little bit. In the order, yeah, here's the rest of these. There's number 32 and number 31. And then we have a Phantom set. It's got Phantom 2040 number 2 from Marvel Comics. Ooh, there's a bonus poster inside. Let's check out the bonus poster. Make sure it's there. Although these look all, these are all in really nice condition. These don't look like they've, I mean, these look like they're all been bagged and boarded and pretty much never read, you know, just sitting in the bag. But I mean, you can tell this one's got some tanning on it a little bit and stuff. So they, they have been, they have been used. But uh, um, I have an insert about the Marvel Ultraverse. And where's the poster? Oh, this must be the poster. Bonus pinup. So not really an uh, inserted poster. In fact, it's not even uh, printed as the centerfold. So if you wanted to take it out and show it, you'd have to rip out more than one page. That sucks. So kind of misleading on the cover there. <laughs> Uh, here's number three. Uh, this one says there's a bonus poster inside as well. Let's, uh, see if they bet did it better in this issue. <laughs> oh, all of these say that. There's number four. Might as well page through it, let you guys take a look at it. Uh, it's written by Peter Guinness. Art by... Art by Steve Ditko. Did not expect that. Steve Ditko and Bill Reinhold. So this is a... Yeah, I can see. I can see that those are Ditko pencils. Okay. And there's your bonus pinup. And at least they put it in the centerfold this time. So if you did want to rip it out, you could... <laughs> And there's number four. And probably don't really need to check, but we will anyway, just in case somebody did rip it out. I don't think that's the case, but uh, we want to be sure about these things. Yeah, there it is. And this one is the centerfold as well. So, mm, not sure how many issues this went for, but there is two, three, and four here. And then this is uh, the Phantom number three, also from Marvel. And this looks like to be a very uh, what I want to say is the more deluxe format. There's a it's got it's heavy. It's got cardstock covers, 
The Phantom the Ghost Who Walks, book three of three from 1995. So it's kind of a a uh, prestige format type series a little bit. Um, doesn't have, it's not square bound, I don't think, no. Nope. But, um, yeah, it's different for the Phantom. All right, so that is number three. That would have been the last issue. There's number two and number one. So complete set there. And we got some more Conan's. Number 29 from Dark Horse. The Toad. <laughs> number 28. Nice, uh, very cool cover celebrating <clears throat> uh, Robert E. Howard's Centennial in 2006. Number 27. 26. And number 25. And we're not done yet. We still got one stack here. Or a couple couple bundles. Um, from Marvel, we got Zorro, number 10. Number 9. Number 8. Seven, six, and Richie Rich and Jackie Jokers, number 18, uh, Richie Rich Money World, number 27, and this one's got some, I mean this, I mean these are more worn than the other books, obviously. Um, they're not only are they older, but they're also like this one's got a stain I can see running through it. Um, this one's got a big indentation on there, so not in the best of shape on these. Uh, Richie Rich Inventions number three, 52 pages, uh, rolled spine, hole in the spine, big cover crease, um, lots of lots of creases and wear on that one. Same thing with this one. Dollars and cents number 57. It's got a hole right there. It goes through to the pages inside. Um, here's the newer one. Richie Rich 11. This was when back when Harvey started uh, like came back basically and started publishing again. And some sleepwalkers. We have number 33. 21. That's cool. Uh, shiny 25th anniversary edition. 48 pages. Uh, probably not a wraparound cover, but let's take a look. Nope. But it does have the shiny uh, background out there. As long as we're up. got it open, let's take a look inside. Uh, Kelly Krantz did the penciling. Frank Percy did the inking. And at this point, it was still being written by uh, Bob Budiansky, who is the creator of Sleepwalker. Cool stuff. One of the few uh, 90s series that I'm actually have some interest in. 
Uh, this is Sleepwalker number 19. I've had this before. This this is actually uh, uh, designed, cover is designed so that you can uh, cut it out and use it as a mask. <laughs> if you look on the other side here, it's got uh, telling you to cut holes for the eyes and the mouth. And then there's a little, uh, you cut out these to put string in so you can wear it on your face. And uh, the the eyes and the mouth are actually perforated for you to just punch them out. But uh, uh, yeah, so I think I already have one of these. So uh, if nobody else wants that, I might actually try and do that. <laughs> uh, Sleepwalker number sixteen. Very cool. And so there we go. We got Sleepwalkers. Uh, and it's actually Spider-Man's on this cover. I don't know if he's actually in the story or not. Hobgoblin is. And uh, some Richie Riches. And so on and so forth. Some Cronians. A lot of, lot of good stuff in this. Um, very happy with this purchase. I wish I could have got it for a little bit less. Unfortunately, they didn't... Uh, they didn't bundle shipping very well. You, uh, Whatnot's not very good at that. It's one of the... Uh, things that whatnot kind of sucks at is if uh if they don't set it up to you know they don't they don't a lot of sellers don't know how to do the flat rate shipping for multiple items like this um there's a few that have figured it out there's a bunch that don't so uh anyway uh Thanks for watching, everybody. That's pretty much the show for today. So I thank you and uh, hope you have a good rest of your day and having a great weekend. So we will see you soon.